Hello, my name is James Lincoln, or Mr. Lincoln. I am a science teacher, and this lesson is an introduction to magnets. Now, you'll find your assignment is below, linked below, in the comments, so go down and look for it. And anytime you hear this, that means that you have a question that needs to be answered. So listen for the and when you hear it, pause the video and try to answer the question. Now, you probably know what a magnet is, or at least you would recognize that I'm holding a magnet. They're usually painted blue and red, and they're usually made of iron. Now, let me show you what a magnet can do. I have several different types of materials here, and we're going to use the magnet and figure out which one it can pick up. We have copper, lead, tin, iron, brass, nickel, cobalt, and aluminum. So we start off by bringing in the magnet. Copper, no effect. Lead, no effect. Tin, oh, the tin had no effect, but the iron was ready to go. Iron is a magnetic substance. I have to hold it down. Brass, ah, the brass had no effect, but the nickel was ready to go. Nickel is a magnetic substance. And this cobalt is found in rechargeable batteries. And the cobalt is ready to go too. So it seems that we have three, and well, aluminum. Aluminum has no effect. So it seems that we have three substances, iron, nickel, and cobalt that are magnetized. Now, generally, magnets do not work on wooden, glass, or plastic objects. It has to be metal. But what about money? Money is made of metal. Okay, here I have several different types of change, and I have quarters, nickels, dimes, and pennies. So let's start with the quarters. There is no effect. Quarters are made of silver and copper. And what about the dimes? Same story, no effect. Now nickels, are nickels made of nickel? Well, they do have a little bit of nickel in them, but not very much, and it is not attracted to the magnet. And pennies are made of copper and zinc, so they shouldn't be attracted. What the? That's not supposed to happen. Wait a second. This is not an ordinary penny. This is a British penny. There's the Queen of England on it. A Queen of England penny is attracted to a magnet, but an Abraham Lincoln penny is not. Those are not made of iron. The British pennies contain iron. Now, I said earlier that iron was what was in a magnet almost all the time and I have some raw iron that came from the ground. This particular type of iron is called magnetite. Magnetite is the type of rock that is magnetic. You might be surprised to witness that this rock is actually attracted to other rocks. These magnetic rocks came from a place in Greece called Magnesia. And that's where they got their name. And that's where magnets get their name, is that they come from this magnetite. Can we use magnetite to pick up ordinary things like paper clips? Yes. I'm sure you've already noticed that my magnet has a red side and a blue side labeled N and S. This means north and south. Let me show you how it works. Here we have a magnet that is labeled north and south. Whoa. And when I bring the north near the north, it gets scared away. But when I bring the south near the north, it likes it. It gets attracted. Try again. South to south, it scares it away. South to north, it likes it. Now, you might say that's a bit of a strange name, north and south. How did we get this name? I'll show you how we get it. If you take a bowl of water, and you float a magnet on top of the bowl, the magnet will turn in a very specific direction. Let's try that again. 
it seems to always want to point in this one direction. This device is called a compass. A compass is any device that tells you what direction is magnetic north. Now over here, I have a real compass, and I'm going to teach you how to use it. The way you use it is, you hold it in your hand and turn it so that the red side is pointing north. Now the other side should be pointing south. That tells you what direction you're going to travel in. Maybe you want to go due east. So the way you do it is, you look closely at the compass, and you dial it by turning it until the red aligns with north, and then you know what direction you're looking. The reason that this works is because the Earth itself is a giant magnet. And when you take a little baby compass and you put it next to this model of the Earth, you can see that there is indeed a north side and a south side that the compass recognizes. Now inside of this baby Earth is a magnet. And this magnet is very strong, so it helps the Earth pretend to be magnetic Earth. But the whole Earth itself is a giant magnet. Now one thing you might not know about compasses is that they can be messed up with by magnets. Take a look. If we bring the magnet in, you can see that it seems to scare the compass needle away. And if we flip it around, it seems to pull the magnet needle toward it. This shows that compasses really are magnetic objects. The ability of a magnet to affect an object is called its magnetic field. That different magnets have a field of influence around them that pushes and pulls on magnetic objects. You can actually see this magnetic field pretty easily by putting a magnet inside of a book. Then you want to sprinkle iron filings on it. You can get these by dragging a magnet across the beach. And when you do this, they form a very definite pattern. This is the magnetic field of the magnet. You can also see the magnetic field with one of these old box style TV screens that your parents probably have thrown them all away by now. You can see it's quite a big box. You bring a magnet up to the box screen and you can see its field happening. And you can try another magnet and see if they're any different in strength. Which magnet do you think is stronger? You can even change it to an animal like a goldfish. This is Timmy the orange fish. Now, Timmy right now is orange, but watch when I bring a magnet up to it. Whoops, Timmy's a new color now. Uh, we can make him Timmy the green fish, or we can make him t Timmy the blue fish, or we can make him Timmy the rainbow fish. Now, what you might not know about the magnetic field is it points in a specific direction. You can figure out what that direction is with a compass. If I bring the compass near the magnet, you'll notice it always seems to point away from the north and toward the south, out of north and into south. This magnet is unlabeled, and we can figure out which side is north and which side is south with a compass. Let's see, which side do you think is the north side? out of north and into south. Oh no, I broke the magnet in half. Uh, let's take a look. This gives us an opportunity to investigate what happens. Let's see. Do you think this side's just gonna be north and this side's just gonna be south? Let's try out the compass. This is still the south side and this is still the north side, but in the middle, huh, 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 aha. This piece has become its own magnet, out of north and into south. When you break a magnet in half, you don't get a north and a south, you get a north-south, 
north-south. That means that if I take two magnets and put them together like this, I've actually constructed a larger magnet. And you can see right here, it's out of north and into south, just as if it was the construction of one big long magnet. But there are other ways that I can put these two magnets together. And that's something I want you to try to figure out what happens for a variety of arrangements. Yeah, this is still north and south, just making a stronger magnet. But what about checker? What do you think will happen? Yeah, out of north into south. Uh. Now I'm going to add an iron nail to the magnetic field. What do you think that will do? Well, the piece of iron extends the magnet. Watch. Yes, out of north and into south, but the tip of the iron is an extension of the north, out of north and into south. The piece of iron itself has been magnetized. When an object gets magnetized, it means that it becomes a magnet itself. So it can pick up magnetic objects like iron. 